This is the Life Ahead Podcast, brought to you by Apollo's Army, a couple of average dudes trying to do above average things. But, uh, no, but, uh, so, I mean, and skip ahead. I know we're going to talk about this, but no, it's okay. Um, we, we could even segue if, you know, I, I mean, see. I went through back in 2007, I was so leading, let's talk about my career for this much. Um, you know, I, I started with the sheriff's office. I worked, I worked as a bailiff. I worked as a patrol deputy. I came to Cedar city police department. I worked as a community service officer for a few months, moved into patrol, uh, you know, I worked in patrol as a patrol supervisor. Um, I was a medic on the SWAT team. Um, I was a bike patrol officer. I, I kind of had all these experiences. And in 2005, I moved into investigations. And really, there was two of us at the time and a, and a rotating guy. Um, really, what my responsibilities became really quickly were child abuse, sex abuse, and dead bodies. Jeez. Um, and and for whatever reason, for the next ten years, that's where I lived. I mean, wow. I caught most of the sex cases because I was good at it. And the other guys are like, eh, if I don't have to, I'm like, they're like, dude, I'll take all the burglaries if you'll take all the sex offenses. And I'm like, I don't really dig burglaries and property crime. I find more, I'm better at interviewing and 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 you know forensics in that way, but. And so with that being said, so I've, I've got this background of interviewing kids and interviewing suspects and talking about horrible things and seeing dead bodies and examining dead bodies and putting dead bodies in sacks. Um, and, and in 2007, I was involved in an incident where a guy lost his life. And I thought to myself, um, it's good that this happened to me because I've been an EMT I, I deal with death all the time. This is something, you know, I, I'm glad that this happened to me and not somebody else that's not, that's not equipped to deal with this. I'm good. Everything's good, right? Um, four days later, I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep. And, and leading up to that time, I was in the gym every day. I was eating chicken and fish. I... I woke up at four in the morning craving Oreos and that's the only thing that tasted good to me for the next five years. I went from, I really went from I, I really kind of on top. Like the department was getting ready to send me to the FBI national Academy. Um, I mean, it was, I, I, I really was on top of my game at that point. And in four days I went to, I, I didn't sleep. All I wanted to eat was Oreos. Uh, Everything that anybody did around me pissed me off, including my family, my kids. I mean, I literally woke, went to bed fine one night and woke up not okay. But because of the stigma of mental illness in law enforcement, I couldn't say anything. But I couldn't say, but I didn't know, like in my mind, like this is happening to me, right? But I'm like, nobody would ever believe me if I told them what's happening to me. And I'm sure that this has never happened to anybody else. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to understand what I'm going through. I'll get over it. I'll, I'll I got to kick it. Wow. You know, I, I can fight through this. I'll be fine. And that went on for a while. I went from coming to work, you know, I was 20 minutes, half hour early to work every day. I stayed on top of my cases. I was super productive. Uh, I went from that to being 20 minutes late to work every day and just sitting, I'd sit at my desk, unable to do anything for eight hours. Couldn't touch a pencil, couldn't pick up the phone. Like I would just sit at my desk for eight hours and literally not function. And, and so pretty soon my supervisors started to notice that. Right. Um, and, and thank goodness, uh, chief Allenson at the time, uh, He's like, you know, comes in my office and shuts the door and he's like, what's up? You know, he's like, you're my guy and you're not my guy right now. What, what? And he knew everything. I mean, right. he knew what had happened. And uh, I mean, he, he'd been involved in that whole thing, but this was something brand new. Like, he's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never dealt with this. Like, I, I don't know what to do. And he'd been, you know, before he came to Cedar, he, he'd been with Layton for 21 ish years. And wow. I mean, he was an extremely experienced police officer, administrator. And he's like, I don't know what to do for you. 
I don't know what to, I don't know how, he's like, we have to fix this, but I don't know what to do. And he, he basically says, you, you need, we, we've got to figure out how to get you help. And my dad was the same. My dad, my dad came over, I remember sitting on my front porch with my dad and him saying, Hey, look, I don't know what's going on, but we got to, you got to address this. And so I, I jumped into the mental health world and nobody knew how to address it. Like I ran around, like people would say, oh, go talk to this guy, go talk to this guy. Um, you know, one guy said, oh, you're, you're fine. Here, give me a, col a, a, a coloring book and said, I want you to color these pictures and bring it back to me. And by what color you color things, we'll know how to diagnose you. And I didn't go back because that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I can right? imagine a world where that's useful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, I'm like, this is not useful. I'm not doing it. Um, I finally, so I got into a psychologist um, who said, and I'm like, doc, you're not going to believe this. This is happening to me. I, I can't eat. I, all I want is Oreos. I'm sleeping two hours a night. Every little noise freaks me out. Uh, one day, my kid, we're sitting down at dinner. My son, who was eight at the time, dropped a bean off of his fork at the dinner table. I jumped across the table and grabbed him. Like I exploded crazy. Where did that, I mean, where did that come from? Right. Um, basically my life did a 180, and like in almost every aspect of my life, everything, Gosh. um, I'd leave work to drive home and I find myself in Parowan or one that I found myself in Canaraville. No idea how I got there. Um, I pulled up the gas pump in my patrol car to put gas in. Couldn't remember my pin number to my gas card that had been my pin number for years. Mm -hmm. I had to call another guy and ask him his pin number to get gas because I couldn't remember it. Yeah. And that's something we use once, twice a shift, right? Yeah, right. I mean, and so, I mean, that's the level of upside down that I went. Uh, I finally, they got me into this guy who's was a, kind of an old psychologist guy. And, I, and I'm like, doc, you're not gonna believe it. And I started to tell, I'm like, this is happening to me and this is happening to me. And then he started listing my symptoms and this and this and this. I'm like, dude. And he says, look, I've, and he goes over and gets the DSM four off the shelf, which is the, the, basically the Bible of psychology, uh, you know, mental illness. And he looks, gets the PTSD and he just starts reading it. And I literally had every symptom. Wow. A and he said, he's like, I've, I work with vets. I've worked with like Vietnam vets my whole career that, aren't as messed up as you and he said you he said i'm only, i'm gonna retire in five years it would be unethical for me to take you as a client because i can never fix you in that amount of time no way and he said he said you got to make some choices he said i he goes i think i can find somebody for you to help you or you go to the di get an army jacket and find a nice bridge because that's where you're headed oh my gosh well, that's what i i'm like i mean i'm oh my gosh I'm floored, right? Because I, I mean, I, I'm thinking this is just something that'll pass. Yeah. Um, he pulled some strings, got me, found me a guy, and, and, and I'm gonna skip ahead years now. Yeah. I wore out therapists. Like I was, I was like going to psychologists three times a week. I wore them out. I like, I wore out like, like years of wearing therapists out. Which, wow. and I progressed. I'd get a little bit better. I'd get better. I'm functioning better. I'm, I'm, fun I, you know, I, I'm maintaining, but I'm not good by any means. Um, and then uh, I got introduced to a, th a thing called EMDR, uh, to type of therapy, and it was brand new at the time. There were very few people in the country uh, that had that had any experience with EMDR. Um, I got introduced to a lady. I worked we, we back in the day. We it, here in Cedar City, we were experiencing kind of rash of choking game deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, our kids, it's a you know an internet challenge basically to asphyxiate yourself, and and it causes death, uh, which is on the uptake again. I'm sorry to say, and I hope that we don't start seeing that back in our school district. Our uh, but I got involved in an organization there, a prevention organization, and ended up and, and still help them with with stuff. Anyway, I got. I, I, I traveled all over the country and traveled really all over the world with this organization 
lecturing. It's, it's silly. It's, just, it's, it's silly because it's me. Like, I've probably been recognized as kind of the foremost expert on choking game law enforcement tactics in the world. Like, I've been to Brazil a few times. I've been That's to, crazy. I've been to Paris. I've, I've been to weird, weird places people listening to me anyway <laughs> no it's okay yes yeah, i mean it's cool though it was a, a, something i'm really proud of but one of the ladies one of the therapists i met through there was kind of one of the groundbreakers in emdr she's like let's try this and so i actually and she was in la so i would actually fly to la wow. and and do emdr therapies um and and it, and it kind of worked and then i had a a, a friend and therapist here in Cedar City, call me and say, hey, look, I've just learned about this new thing. I'm getting certified. And I'm like, hey, I know about this. And she was somebody that I worked with as a therapist with that, that saw a lot of kids. And so our cases would cross paths. Mm. And so I started an EMDR therapy here in Cedar with her. It absolutely saved my life. Wow. It would, it, it brought me, and, and, and it wasn't, I mean, this was years of EMDR therapy, but it brought me from, from, PTSD, crippling PTSD to now, and, and I still do EMDR therapy, uh, kind of on a maintenance schedule. I'm not going, I'm going a few times a year for, you know, when I feel like overwhelmed, it's, I know it's right. time for a checkup, but, uh, but that absolutely saved my life. But That's one crazy. thing that happened in the middle of that, uh, that probably saved my life again. And, and, and literally, I mean, a, along with the, along with PTSD comes suicidal ideations and hopelessness and depression. And it, I mean, it's, it's awful. I, I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's absolutely awful. Um, but the common thread through that was still music. I still found some peace in music. Um, I had some really good friends who were really great musicians uh, that for whatever reason at that time, this was about 2011, 2012 invited, kind of invited me into their world. Uh, they're like, dude, you need to come play with us. You need, cool. you, you need to, you, you're joining the band. <laughs> you're in, um, you're in the band. You're in, you're in you're the in. band, buddy. And, uh, and, and it was like, Hey, look, just, just come, and, come and play a couple gigs with us just because you'll really dig it. And, and then I ended up in the band for a few few years that's awesome but uh get, hear it for the flesh stretchers you know <laughs> there we go let's uh, go uh no but uh, seriously a, a throw and, and at that time the the flesh stretchers were kind of a big deal um cool. locally i mean we and it's funny the flesh stretchers have come along in different iterations through the years and when it starts to get super popular they just shut it down uh, ah, like, we're gonna give people a break too much it's too much time and go back to because the, they all were like in serious like. bands as well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, but anyway we do so, understand so I, it's like oh wait a minute we're getting too big boys time to shut her down <laughs> for a few years yeah <laughs> like literally and, and then but uh, a lot but, of time. But, but i mean we were playing i mean i mean we'd play we, we played all you know all the local bars clubs all over all over the place we got invited to play at the uh at the at a legislative barbecue. There we go. That like, sounds with like all a, the senators. And that the, sounds like a party. Uh, we ended up they not. In on that. We, we ended <laughs> up being too busy. We couldn't do it. Oh dang it! Because um, I was really curious how. Well, that went we down. did. We did play right. a birthday party in Salt Lake. That the, like the speaker of the house. There was a bunch of legislators at this birthday party that are nice. like, dude, these are the people. And we're talking full spandex, wigs, makeup, Sick. chains. Yeah, it's you can get on facebook and find the flash i think stretchers. one There's, came up the other day of you dressed up like that it did my wife like reposted it all right yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to we'll find that yeah. and put it no. in this Let's video put it, oh for there, sure yeah. that has to go in there is Let's a video there. there's a promo video okay we're on facebook sure. somewhere yeah. the only problem is as our uh like a guitarist video. had a shirt on that had a really bad word on it what why we wore that the day we shot the video i don't know <laughs> it's like i let my i lit my effing friends on fire i believe is what his shirt dang said. it so, dang it it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as cool as your tupac shirt but, but it's not a, no but but you know what for whatever reason that was my happy place it w was on stage and That's performing cool. and i i play guitar really horribly and i'm and i'm rip, but but that actually motivated me to learn more and to get better at it and and now it's i'm not proficient i really need to find time to 
Yeah. Go walk in my room with my racket guitars and play. I don't do it near enough. But uh, you know, primarily, I mean, I did that in vocals, and and I got. Sick. I mean, I I I sang a lot, and it's something that I still really enjoy. Cool. Um, but honestly, that couple of years pulled me through a point in my life that I don't know that I would have survived without it. Cool. I, and I and to this day. I mean, I, those guys are so important to me because they brought me into, and they'll never know. They'll never know what that meant because I really was in a bad place. And for them to be like, Hey dude, throw that wig, throw the wig on and, <laughs> and, and get on stage. And I mean, it, it was an incredible experience and Amazing. I've had the opportunity, you, you know, through the years, uh, I've written some music. With, you know, Brian Werber and I wrote a song together a couple of years ago for a for a CJC event uh, for Dancing with the Stars. Oh, we yeah. we, uh, cool. we actually uh, Werb and I and and uh, Davey Evans, uh, guys, guys, some of the guys from Spilby Dog, you know, performed this song that we'd written, uh, you know, at, uh, at the Heritage Center for a thousand people at the CJC. That's um, great. I mean, we've I, so it's still something that I really enjoy and something that I do every once in a while, but. I'm by no means proficient at it, but it's still something that brings me a lot of happiness. That is and beautiful. so, but I think, you know, we, we actually were, were working on, on booking. Uh, we got invited to play the whiskey. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was kind of a done deal and things kind of went sideways. Dang. Things, things fell apart. The, the things with the band fell apart. And it and we just we never did it, but we were Dang. yeah we were the the whiskey was like yeah we're let's that's, we're having you that's like the mecca of spandex and crazy absolutely hair and all that. Absol- mean, no absolutely so wow. but it, I mean it was just super cool dude um it, amazing I've got to I mean we we've got to we've got to backtrack a little just to just to talk about <laughs> some of the points. <laughs>